Is it on? Oh, it's on. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is yours truly, Taylor Jones, and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits. And right now, as you can tell, it's Tuesday, January the 12th, 2021, and nothing has changed. But at the same time, a brand new day means a whole lot of issues that we have to face. I mean, it's the same old song as the Four Tops once said. But for this episode of Cold Man's Winter, episode five, I would like to talk about the dangers of regrets. But for those that didn't watch my uh, recent video, Cold Man's Winter, winter episode four don't worry don't fret you still got plenty of time to check it out because the link will be in the description bar down below but for right now you can tell that when it comes to dealing with regrets you gotta understand that life is not always 100 percent simple you always get in the caught of i mean you always get caught up in things that make you want to run or run out of run out of the range run out of I mean, run away from home probably take a vacation as long as you want it like a week or a month but still running away from your problems is gonna make you turn out worse I mean think about it I've been in a position where I felt like I don't belong like I'm an outcast and I remember um big room on Outcast debut album, uh, Southern Playlist of Cadillac Music, on a skit called C Claiming True. No, 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 True That. True That when Big Rue was breaking, breaking down the word Outcast and what does it mean. And I remember he said something like this: <clears throat> Operating under the crook, uh, operating under the crooked American system for too long. Outcast. Pronounced outcast. Adjective meaning homeless or unaccepted in society. But let's look deeper than that. Are you an outcast? If you believe in fundamental truths contained within this music, you probably are. But if, it's, if you think it's all about pimping girls and slamming Cadillac doors, then you're probably a cracker. Or a man who think, or a Negro who thinks he's a cracker. Or maybe just don't understand. An outcast is someone who has looked differently. He's not accepted in society because of his clothes, his hair, his occupation, his beliefs, or his skin colors. Now look at yourself. Are you an outcast? I know I am. As a matter of fact, screw being everything else. There's only so much time left in this crazy world. Wake up, Negroes, and realize what's going on around you. Poisoning of, poisoning of the food and water, cigarette engineers, and can, is disease and controls over in your life. Take back your existence or die like a punk. This is Big Group saying right on to the real and death to the fakers. Peace out. Now, in the situation where a lot of people have regrets at becoming outcasts like traitors or sellouts or all the negative things, you're starting to realize that, wait a minute, who's regretting more? Me or you? Because I know the feeling when it's when it's like to be hurt. You don't feel safe. You don't feel comfortable all, all by your surroundings. Some of your family members they are negative influences because they drink a lot. They they easily mislead you. For instance, like let's just say that a parent that two parents had a child and the mother she got hostile because she the, she thought that the baby was a girl but unfortunately the father wouldn't accept it but unfortunately he had to deal with it because the wife had a uh, anger issue like she wants to kill that Negro kill a double crossing for not accepting decisions. But little did this this mother know that she had another thing coming. So let's just say that she, not only is she a, like, 
cranky. She just abusive, like slapping your child, like a, a son who the mother claim is a daughter. What? Come on. And everybody started picking on him, on for for dressing up like a girl, and even though she was tired of, I mean, the son was tired of being looked upon as a girl in college, I mean, in high school he had enough matter of fact his dad was silent but then all of a sudden his son started getting mad like dad why didn't you do anything about it I mean I, re I can't believe this I'm tired of this I'm tired of being treated like a girl I am not a girl well, well, son, I hear you. But why didn't you do something? I was scared. I regret, regret not telling you this from the very beginning. But your mother was always hostile. She even tried to kill me a couple times. She threatened to kill me if, for not accepting. Well, you know why? That's because she didn't even have parents that said it her straight like for instance like we parents right now we regret on not disciplining our children and some people will consider discipline some will call it abuse because you know if you whoop your child so hard you gonna kill him or her and you don't want that but nobody gives a dang anymore and the I don't give a dang society. Man starts to rear its ugly head for more than one negative reason. I mean, look at this place. Look at the society that we're living in. I'm driving, driving around, trying to find some peace. But unfortunately, there is no peace. There's no justice. There's no rest. A lot of people be talking about regrets. Like, I regret not being there for my child. I regret not standing up to my wife, to my husband. I regret on not keeping my head up. You know? Why are you not doing all that? Because you let fear get the best of you. My dad said it best. Shout out to my father, James Jones, if he's watching this film, or make this video. I'm gonna I'm tell you like my dad told me. You're letting the devil steal your joy. I mean, how long has the devil stole our joy? That's the number one regret that we can't even shake off, like, accept. Life is plain hard to get. You just don't want to admit. And it takes more than high five to tell you that. Even though it was a song that they did about a girl. In which the band suggests that she likes me. Yeah, she likes me. Yeah. But, come on. But anyway, let me get back to the story. Now... In high school, well, let's, just, let's just say that it was junior year. Junior year of high school. He decided, the, the son decided to get, get on dad's bad side because he should have known better. The father should have known better. But no, the mother went too far. I think she's so much older than the father. Now that is really bad. That's a bad look. Let's just say that the that the father decided, like after the son, if I if you knew I was a father, what would what would have you named me? You know, if he was my son, I would have named you John. Then why would you take, why would you be scared to tell mom that she was wrong? I'm tired of being abused. If this happens again, I am definitely going to let the whole world know who I truly am.
starting with my school. I've been bullied for so long, and I, and the only way I'm gonna, gonna handle this is if I, if I say nothing. Well, I'm tired of being, taking the shut up treatment. I'm tired of this abuse that my mom is getting. Slapping me in the face, knowing I'm a girl. I mean, knowing I'm a man, but she won't accept. She won't accept. It. That's the number, number one regret. If I had my way after high school, I would be leaving, leaving my family behind, not looking back, not even sure, sure if I'm going to forgive my mother for how how asinine the situation has been. Because I regret myself. I regret being being looked different. All because of a woman's fatal mistake of my identity. So, let's just say that before junior year was over, for the summer vacation, he's the son who decided to stop dressing up in girl clothes, decides to to keep all to get all manly stuff and decides to get rid of all of his outfits that which is sort of what his mom suggests but she be still believed that he's a girl he even did all he even cut his hair he, he got he even put all his all the clothes that he used to wear even in the sizes that he wear now in the put it like in the mustard seed like Goodwill and like he stopped for a moment and realized there's no turning back he wanted to be a man he he wanted to uh, get on the right track of things but his mother wouldn't let him it's like a like a cop not allowing your uh, son or daughter to date somebody unless he or she is out of harm's way, not a gangster. You know, I mean, the people are asking too much of everything. Everything. That's the number one regret right there. That everybody can't get out their head. Even celebrities have regrets. I regret on the things I said. I mean, everything you said, which leads to controversy. I mean, everybody has an open mind, but, but according to some folks, like the government and like sports companies, National Basketball Association, National Football League, National Hockey League, they want you to be on your best behavior. But there was like one reporter, one female reporter, and of course she was white, and she was not pleased with what LeBron and Kevin Durant were talking about in that video they made when they were just riding around, wearing like say it was just keeping it real. You know what that woman wants LeBron and the other players to do? Shut up and dribble. And even other individuals, they took it in the, in the harshest way. When you say, when that woman says shut up and dribble, why don't she shut up and mind her business? We don't even know what she does. We don't even watch her. See, that's the that's what leads to controversy. Like, you, dis, you disrespect the society and people get, take offense to it. Like, they want you to man up. Like, that's why... I, is that why we be told to shut the heck up so many times? Yes. At the same time, no. Because there's more than meets the eye. So, who the heck are you to judge me? That's like the question that everybody's wondering. Who the heck are you to judge? Well, if I made a hit single, if I was in the music business, I would release a single, a song called... Who am I to judge? Because back when I used to write lyrics, 
I used to talk about the same issues. My anger. What leads me to be angry? Why am I angry all the time? What's the point? I mean, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of artists, they sing about the same thing. Making money, smoking weed, having sex, and, uh, man. Why not tell a true story based on your appearances? People don't want to hear that. They just rather listen to, I'm a gangster, I'm a gangster. I got big boobs, big breasts, big butt, big hair, big fingernails. What? Next thing you know, a lot of people be like, wait, so you gonna follow Cardi B now? You gonna follow the Migos? You gonna follow Lil Uzi Vert, Young Thug, Megan Thee Stallion? Everybody's been following people in the wrong way. Why not follow your mom and dad? Why not follow your bigger brother, bigger sister? The people who raised you, brought you in this world and decides that they're not gonna take you out. They're gonna make you realize that this life you live in is too short. So, why? Why are we stuck? in the same same ball of confusion because like the temptation says that's what the world is today a president one president is about to be kicked out of the office like goodbye you're fired yeah his own words is going to come back and haunt him while another president is about to be inaugurated but that's like in a week from now. A week and a day. Eight days. Meanwhile, we're still struggling with all issues. Like regrets. And I remember in my mind, I had a vision. Could have been a dream. That, let's say, that I threw a party. At a, at a decent spot party where everybody can get together, safe and sound. No alcohol, no drugs, just good music and they like dance, take pictures, mingle, like communication. And all of a sudden, my ex-friend, like, let's just say that my ex-friend, and I'm not going to say who it is, but... Let's just say the person that I didn't get along with decides to to put an end to my act. What act? What did I do? I was throwing a party. And this is, let's say it's party number three. I threw my third party three weeks and it's Friday night. And the time was from seven till eleven. 7 to 11, the party takes place. And the third party, the third Friday, things went bonkers. Because my ex-friend decides to stop the music. No, cut the music! But unfortunately, let's just say that she brought a gun. She threatens, like, what's going on? And she found me Oh no. I mean, and she wants me to kick out, to kick me out. Like she's trying to forbid me to be in my own party. Look, wait a minute. If that was the case, I'll probably act like actor Alfonso Ribeiro from The Fresh Prince of Bel Air back when he was called. Carlton. Eh. And let's let's just say that um let's say that he decided to uh remember the scene when he was called a sellout by Glenn Plummer. Um let's just say that I decided to stand up like that. Of course, in my mind 
there will be a lot of ang angry words to use, a lot of name calling. But unfortunately, as a Christian, I should be careful of the name calling. Like, who am I trying to please? Am I trying to please the world or am I trying to please God? I got to fight back. But the only way I can fight back is with words. Now, I remember, remember, I mentioned this person had a gun. And since I named, consider her as a she, I am not, I'm not going to be able to do something stupid like step on her shoes. No, I'm I'm not going to do that. But I got to stoop to her level. But she has the gun. I got to know what my limits. Matter of fact, I'll quote this from Alfonso Ribeiro. Remember, from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You think I'm a sellout. Why? Is it because of how I dress? Or I live on a hill? Or maybe it's because... I listen to Barry Manilow. I am racing. I am trying my best. I've been racing. I've been running the same races you and jumping the same hurdles. So why are you tripping me up? Being black is not who I'm trying to be. Because that's because that's because that's who I am. You know. You, you once said that black people need to stick together, but you really don't know what that means. So if you ask me, you're the real sellout. But let's just say that if I had a home homeboy, like a, a best friend who, was, who had my back, he would probably stand up with me, stand up for me, Stand by me, stand by me, darling, buddy, stand by me. You know, is that too much to ask? Because imagine if some of the people, let's say they already knew about the issue over a stupid um, social media controversy that I spread. And knowing that it's, it was a long time ago. But let's just say that they didn't know the person who kicked me out well enough until all of a sudden, like, after I said what was on my mind and how angry I was at this so-called person who decided to get on my bad side, make me feel like a fool, kick me out of my own party, even threatened to kill me if I ever came back which means I gotta stop partying for a while until this madness comes to an end how in the heck would I get by for over stupid stuff like that I can with God all things are possible all you have to do is keep God in your life keep him first let him do the talking for you let him not no double crossing hood rat or or a thug wannabe that can't even keep up with Tom. Cause in my lifetime, I realize I'ma keep it real with y'all. Time is not our friends. Not even once. And if you're gonna continue to let let Tom ruin you. And you be wasting your time. How the heck you gonna survive then? Gosh dang. It's like, who, who the heck are you to judge? Right? Who are you to judge? It's only you. So let's just say that afterwards, after I said, said what was meant to be said about my ex friend after kicking me out. Unfortunately, let's say that somebody had the audacity to play a diss track that I made. Even though it was 100% well planned, like I made it, made the song, but I didn't want to record it. I mean, didn't want to release it. Because after 
I've not made a diss track on a random person. Let's say I made a diss track about my ex-friend before the day when I got kicked out. And somebody actually heard it. Like they're going to leak, leak my song. Let the whole world listen to it. Everybody in the party. And it follows a music video, but I am not rapping. It's showing clips of and pictures of me and ex friend. But let's just say that one part of the music video, even though I left the party, I'm out the door and everybody else is like, wait, what just happened? What the heck just happened? That is that hood rat. That what happened. All over the stupid social media thing, that stupid bull crap from a few years ago. But then the diss track came on. A video was followed by, which is just random pictures and videos, video clips from Facebook to YouTube. And unfortunately, to make matters worse, let's just say that the diss track, the video showed my ex-friend's mugshot. And everybody was like, <gasps> and then look at her like, oh, you, two-timer. For shame. And some people will be folding their arms like this. Sell out. Calling her names. No wonder that, no wonder that dude was right. You nothing but a troublemaker. This is for my friend. Which, I mean, a lot of name calling. A lot of name calling involved and anger. Let's just say that the next day, like, I wake up. Let's imagine I went, I lived in a motel called the Hollywood Inn. We are living in the Hollywood. I wake up Saturday morning. Still disappointed. But unfortunately, what they didn't know, the diss track that I made about my ex-friend, after I made it, I got down on my knees and asked for repentance because when you know it's wrong, it's wrong. But since someone um, already played played it at the party after I left and realized the truth like why such and such my ex-friend had to be such a jerk and kick me out of my own party because I was the one responsible for getting everybody together and then all of a sudden all hell is broken loose like you still mad at me you still got hatred for me you really want to see me fall what would Jesus do? That's the question that we all regret to ask. We don't ask that. We don't even try to. If Jesus knew about this, he would tell my friend, hey, look, you're going too far now. You really need to put the end to that, put the end to that hatred of yours. You need to let that hate out and get your act together and start, start over and give him another chance. He may have, may have hurt you and annoyed you and been disobedient about you, but he cares so much about you that you forgot who your true friends are. I mean, some people will be like, man, the heck with social media. That's why I ain't, I ain't fading with that bull crap anymore. They have the right to be mad. Everybody got the right to be mad. They blame it on the internet. They blame it on your behavior, your your looks. They're tired of your bull crap. They're tired. But what you gonna do? Huh? Have you thought of asking yourself? That's what you regret most. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it? You know what I mean? Stupid stuff happens for many reasons. But back to the story. I get out of the out the door. Let's say I live in the second floor. And the number was 206. 
And everybody stood at me. Looking like they about to fight like an army against me because of my diss track. But all of a sudden, let's say they gave me a hand. They showed me mad love. Like, they comforted me. And then the very next week, madness starts to rear its ugly head, but no longer. So now you know what it's like when you have regret in your head. There's no escape from it. But the only way you can make it escape, like get it out your mind, is to stop holding it in. You know? So, after being disrespected and being kicked out of my own party and decide I'm not going to go to parties anymore for a while. Like, let's say that I took a month off. People started to... uh stop partying as much as I did and decided to put focus on other things like important things word up like what important things what other important things is there besides going to school working at their jobs finding Jesus still away to Jesus still away home I ain't got long to stay here. You know. Decide to get that life life together. Before time runs out. Because we don't know how much time we got left. Because if we ain't going to get our acts together, we're going to end up dead wishing that we should have done in the first place. But it's too late. We can't make the last wish after death. That's not how it goes. So, so in my opinion... The more we regret, the more complications they're going to get. And my ex-friend, after being, after being the only one left at the party, after the diss track was played and everybody got so mad at her, they were like, you know what? Screw her. She ain't Jack Dilly Squire. I we going to find that man and we're going to comfort him. And make sure he's okay. I mean, that's all we got to do. We got to look out for one another. We, we got to see things eye to eye. You know what I'm saying? So, why live in regret when you can overcome it? You let the devil get in your head. That's the biggest regret you're going to have. Stop letting him in your head. Stop letting fear get the best of you. And stop letting... um. All bad things hurt you. Because not all men and women forward to their own downfalls at all. So, until then, just think about what you ought to do. Because if you regret, more often, it's going to get out of hand. With all that being said, this is yours truly, Taylor Jones, saying... If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and there'll be more in stores. Thank you for watching episode 5 of Cold Man's Winter Season 2. And this episode has been brought to you by this week's Sweet Lady of the Week. And this one goes out to Priscilla Herring. And to Priscilla Herring, if you're watching this, this one's for you. So, with all that being said, it's yours truly, Taylor Jones, signing out.